What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be making some finesse swim jigs. Sometimes the swim jigs that we buy are a little bit too big and sometimes we need to downsize that presentation in order to get those fish to really eat the baits that we're throwing at them. Maybe you need to downsize because that bait is really small in the lake that you're fishing. In today's video, we're gonna be using the casting jig mold from Do It Molds. It's a three cavity mold. It's gonna carry the one eight, three sixteenth and a quarter. There's a bunch of features that I wanna go into that I really like about this mold. So one thing is it is a weedless mold. Obviously, you can make these non-weedless if you want to by not having that base hole pin go in there. The mold calls for three out and four out hooks. The three out is for the one eighth and the three sixteenth, and then it calls for a four out in that quarter ounce. You can put the three out in all three sizes. Skirt collar is separate from the keeper and it has an actual plastic trailer keeper. I like making jigs that have that keeper already poured in there. Just makes things a little bit easier, takes less modifications, and you're gonna be able to keep that trailer on there a little bit easier. The hooks that we're gonna be using in today's video are the Victory 10886 in the three aught size. Like I said, this mold calls for the three aught and the four aught. We're gonna be using these three aught Victory hooks in today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be making the quarter ounce swim jigs. I'm gonna put that base hole pin in there and then we're gonna lay our hook inside, just like so. Give you guys a better look at it. And that's all it takes to get this thing ready to go and ready to pour. I like to always make sure that this is flush so that way we don't get any flashing. Another good habit is to warm your molds before you pour. Just simply putting your mold on top of the lead pot with your components inside is good enough to get everything nice and warm inside and it just helps to get more complete pours. I like to leave it on there for maybe 10, 15 minutes before I start pouring. Another thing that I like to do is always test to make sure I have a good amount of lead coming out of my pot and that's just simply testing it Yep, we got a good flow down there. That's all you gotta do is pay attention, make sure you got good flow. So now that our mold is nice and warm, we're gonna go down underneath our pot, get our mold in position, and lift up on our lever, put it in there, let it cool down, and then we'll check it out, make sure it's all complete and looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna open up our mold and check out our swim jig. And as you can see, it looks really, really good right there. Nice, complete pour. Little tiny bit of flashing up at the top and towards the sprue, but nothing we can't clean up. So we're just gonna repeat that process over again. Gonna put our base hole pin in its slot, get our three aught victory hook in place. Just like that, we're ready to go. We're gonna fold our mold closed, check to make sure everything's nice and flush. Next thing we're gonna do, test for flow again. Good flow, grab our mold, take it underneath, fill up our cavity, let everything cool down, we'll check it out. Once again, open up the mold, go over to our cavity, Everything turned out really, really good. There's our swim jig. Not as much flashing up at the sprue this time. That one looks good. So I'm just gonna talk you through some pointers in this section of the video. We're making one of these quarter round swim jigs again, but the keys is having a nice hot mold and making sure your components aren't too cold. The components don't always have to be super hot, but the warmer they are, the better everything is because that lead comes through the top and as it starts contacting everything, it starts to cool down and they have the components are too cold, it will start to solidify that lead. And the reason I always like to check for flow is because sometimes the spout down here can get clogged up. And when you check for flow, you're making sure that that's not clogged up and you're not gonna have not enough lead going into your mold. So you're gonna be able to put your mold down there, have that spout open up, fill up that sprue cavity, and you know that your jig's gonna most likely be complete. All right, let's open up our mold and check out our third swim jig. This one turned out really, really good as well. You can see that bait keeper down there really, really well. And then you can also see all the detail of the eyes. We don't have any flashing around the line tie. Everything's looking pretty good. So now we're at the point where we need to start cutting off our sprues. I just like to take a pair of shears and I just cut that sprue off. And then as you can see on the bottom of this jig head, we have a little bit of a sharp spot right here. So we just take a file and we're just gonna file that down. Doesn't take a lot, but now it's nice and smooth down there. And then once again, we just gotta cut off this sprue, just like that. We take our file, just file everything down, get it nice and smooth, just like that. Okay, so now we're at the step where we need to start painting the heads of our jigs. What I like to do is use a heat gun along with Protec powder paint. The first color that we're gonna be using is electric shad. You're gonna to want to shake up your cup 
of Protec powder paint so it loosens up in there. The next step that you're gonna do is turn on your heat gun or whatever heat source you're gonna use and then heat up the head of your jig. I like to do it about a, a 15 count for these quarter ounce jigs. And then you're gonna dip it into the powder paint and kind of swish it around really quick. And then you're gonna take it out. And then depending upon the consistency of the powder paint, if it looks all melted, then you're good to go. If it looks like it's still kind of a powdery color, then you're gonna to wanna to heat it just a little bit to get it to melt down. Okay, so sometimes after you powder paint, you gotta take and clean out the eye of the hook so that way you don't have any issues when you bake pretty simple process i just take these um, eye busters and just kind of clean everything out you can take a hook point and kind of go in there open everything up a little bit more and once it's all done being baked in the toaster oven everything will melt down and it'll look really good so now at the point of the process where we're going to put our jigs into this clamping rack i like to use the clamping rack um, when possible because if I ever have any paint that runs down the shank of the hook it, it doesn't end up pooling up at the bottom of the jig where the line tie is or at the belly of it It'll pool up and just slide down the actual uh, Shaft of the hook. So that's what it should look like all finished up You want to make sure that you don't get everything down to the bottom So that way the paint doesn't end up pooling up at the bottom and then you got your jig stuck to the bottom of your clamping round now it's time to put our jigs into the toaster oven, just like so. Close the door. We're gonna put it on for 20 minutes and it's already at 350. All right, so our finesse swim jigs are done being baked. You wanna bake them so that way the powder paint gets a lot more durable. So now it's time to put our weed guard in. I'm gonna mix up some two-part epoxy, dab that weed guard into the two-part epoxy and then just simply slide it in. Just like that. Sometimes you lose a couple of little pieces of the weed guard, not a big deal. But just get it in there nice and snug, and then you just let everything set up. And there we go, we got our swim jig. All right, we're gonna repeat that same process, gonna dip the weed guard into that two-part epoxy, and we're gonna slide everything in. Sometimes you gotta kinda twist it a little bit to get it to go in there all the way. And there you have it, there's our white swim jig. Typically I would go with a clear or a white weed guard, but I'm out of them right now. So we're gonna make do with the black. I don't really know that it matters that much, but for consistency purposes, typically I would use white. Now it's time to finish up our swim jigs. We're gonna take this skirt that I just made up, put the hook point right down the middle, slide it all the way up. Make sure the jig head is in the middle of that skirt. Slide it all the way up. There you have it. Good looking jig right there. Well guys, there you have it. Two awesome looking finesse swim jigs. Here in a second, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a couple of adjustments I would make to these before I actually go fish them. So as of right now, these things are ready to go. They are ready to go out and fish. However, there's a couple of things that I wanna talk about prior to you just making these up and going. I do think that you should trim up this weed guard a little bit. I think it's a little bit long for this bait. So I would definitely trim that up and then I would definitely be considerate of what size trailer I put on this swim jig. You're gonna put a smaller size trailer on there and then I definitely am gonna cut this jig skirt so that way the trailer has the most action possible. So basically what you wanna do is when you thread that trailer on there, wherever that movement begins on that bait, that's where you're gonna to wanna to trim that skirt so that way the skirt doesn't impair any of the action that that trailer is gonna give off. One more thing that you might consider is basically holding this jig from the bottom part of the skirt and actually cutting the underneath side of the skirt. It just thins that skirt out even more and just makes it even a little bit more finesse. Well guys, there you have it. Those are some finesse swim jigs with the casting jig mold from Duo Molds. Again, there's gonna be a list of everything that I was using in the video down in the description, along with my affiliate link that's gonna send you directly to the Duo Mold site. All the stuff that I have listed out is what I want you to search on the Duo Molds website, so that way you have the easiest time finding all these different components. Everything from the mold, the hook, the skirt collars, the skirt colors, everything that you need is gonna be listed down in that description. If you guys wanna watch some more of my tackle making videos, make sure to click on my tackle making playlist. Or if you wanna see me build some football jigs, make sure to click on that video that's on the screen right now as well.